us to look at rules of differentiation. Remember that when we differentiate, when we look for the same thing, whether we use it as a transparent spoon or the next topic called rules of differentiation. Fortunate for us at this level, we only have one rule. For example, if we've got f of x is equals to a x to the power n, it is relieved. Remember what the, the first problem that you did with you, it was y is equals to minus 3x squared. We did this problem using the first principle until we came to a solution which was y prime was equals to minus 6x. We eventually got this answer. Now this method will take us to the solution in a very shorter way. It in end up, if we are looking for the gradient, the average gradient in this way, not using the first principle, but using rules, remember that it's going to give us the same thing. So this rule says, you take the exponent, which is n in this particular case, we multiply it with the coefficient of x, then go back to the exponent, you subtract 1. In this particular case, this is what we will have. In this case, we will have n times a x to the power n, then you subtract 1 in your exponent. So this becomes very important. This is the rule that we use in our matrix syllabus, Marvel Center, using the number of rules of differentiation. This rule becomes important. Fortunately for us, it's the one that we'll be using. Now, <coughs> it is important to note that when you differentiate, whether using the first principle or rules, you're still looking for the gradient. That becomes very important. So hence, calculus is the study of gradient. Whether we use this notation, looking for the gradient. Whether we use y prime, still looking for the gradient. Whether we use this one, dx, looking for the gradient. Whether we use dy, dx, we're looking for the gradient. Remember, when we calculus here to differentiate. In other words, we usually say find dy over dx or dy dx. Look here. If I say to you, what is change in y over change in x? It is the gradient. Ah, if we say what is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, what is this? It is the gradient. What is it that we notice the gradient? So whenever we have that situation, so it's for the gradient. Therefore, what is this? It is gradient. If you go to your trigonometry, you always find this situation as well. If you've got something like this, let's put it in the first quadrant. Let's call our theta, let's put our theta there. These will be your y-axis, and these are our x-axis, of course, that becomes your hypotenuse or your radius. If I'm looking for tan theta, tan theta in this diagram, if you know your definitions, what is tan? Tan is opposite over adjacent. In this case, what is opposite? Opposite is y. What is adjacent is x. Ah. Ubaonga pezul, y. Ubaonga zan, x. What is that? The gradient. Ubaonga pezul, y. Ubaonga zan, x. What is this? It's a gradient. That is why when I formulate tan theta is equal to m, it comes from the fact that that is the gradient. Right. I want us to look to do these few problems quickly with you. Let's look at the first problem that we have here. Uh, second from November 2008, it was question 8.2. Find dy dx if that is what we have. Now, I cannot differentiate until our, our, our expression is in this form. Find the status value of it is in this form each and every term. In other words, it's safer to, to, to differentiate each term first. See, Ms. Agula form in the form of ax to the power n. You cannot take, we, we, we differentiate on about a, about x, about n in this particular form. That's, what, that's the form that we want first. This one is confusing. I cannot see what is a, what is, what is x, what is n there. Let's put it in that form first. I know that before I differentiate, I indicate when I'm starting to differentiate by putting this prime sign. But I'm not differentiating at the moment. This then will be, how do I make this in exponential form? How can you write x in exponential form? Remember, there is two on a parallel that you should always know. And this one, there is one on a parallel. So that is x to the power one. Now, how do you change this into exponential form? For example, if I give you a cube root of x to the power six, how can you write this in exponential form? 
this then will be this x to the power 6, then you divide by this number L upon the square root, which will be to the, over 3. So that's how you write that in exponential form. So it's the same thing here. Remember there is 1 there and there is 2 here. So how do I write this in exponential form? It will be x to the power 1 over 2. So that's how I write this square root of x in the exponential form. This then will be over what? This is over 2 minus r. Exponents. If I take this x, this sign will change into a negative one. In negative, it's a positive. Look here. What do we have on top? We've got one, sino sino six. So if we take it on top, it will be to the power minus three. Okay, I can see now this is ax to the power n. Let me clean this one. This then will be another differentiated. I'm still trying to clean my expression. There is one, next to two, next to it, x to the power half. Ah, I can see what is a, what is x, what is n now. Minus one over six, which is a, x to the power minus three, which is n. Right, now it is in this form, then I can differentiate. You take this, you multiply it by here, then the second Let's do this thing. I indicate when I start to differentiate. I'm showing them now I'm looking for the derivative, dy dx. You don't continue with y here when you start to differentiate. Remember, you're only differentiating once, not more than once in this particular case. Right, let's take the exponent and we multiply it here. What is half times half? It will be one over four x to the power half minus one. What is half minus one? It is minus half. It will be minus one over two. Minus one over two. All right, let's, let's do the other one now. We take the exponent, you multiply it this time. Negative times negative, it will be positive. What is three times one over six? Three are present with six results. Three, we are going three, we are going to We are going to six, we are going to x to the power minus three, minus one, it will be minus four. That's what we have. It is advisable that you always leave our exponent in a positive form. Remember, in most cases, when you leave it in a sad form, it will end in a sad form. Always leave it in a positive exponential form. Let's do this thing. Right. We are going to take this down. So, salaban na pezu. Sala u one over. Uso fika ba ngezans. So, fika u four. Uba no zangezans manj. U x to the power minus half. Maya gezant uzo plus half. Ah, that's what we have. But we know also what is x to the power half. It is that. So we eventually take it back. This is plus. Let's try and make our exponent positive in this case. Or we should go to x to the power minus four. Ozo zangezant. Eshiye ban nga pezul. Eshiye one. Kona ban gezant. Already konu two. No x minus yang gezant. Uzo to the power positive four. Ah, we are done that side. Let's clean only. So our dy, dx will eventually be 1 over 4 square root of x, because x to the power half, x to the power half is square root of x. It is square root of x, plus you write this as it is, 1 over 2x to the power 4. This is what you do when we are using the rules. I want us to look at the second one. It was taken from the March exam 2013 national examination. It was question 9.2. Determine dy dx if we are given that. Now, why we took this problem? It is for, for, for the reason that this is grade 8, grade 9. And the way that we read it becomes important. What do we have there? 2 square root of x plus 1 all over x squared. What does all over? It means both 2 square root x over x squared can no 1 nine over x squared. It is important that we must be able to understand that rule. This then will be. Before I even do it, I clean it first. So this will be y is equals to 2. This is x, to, square root of x is x to the power half. Remember, this is over what? This is over x squared. Can you now have 1 na yeah, 40 over x squared? That becomes important. That will become important. Which is all over. It's this one is over this one, and that one is over that one. Now, let's do this one. Let's clean it first before we differentiate. 
then our y will be equal to 2. We've got, we've got to take this one on top. This would be 2x to the power 1 over 2 minus 2. Ah, because also I'm taking it on top. This exponent will come negative. It's in which section? If you divide x powers with the same base, you subtract the exponents. If you multiply powers with the same base, you add the exponents. Plus, let's take this on top. This will be konu wanga pezu. So look, magi wanga pezu go for one. One, we don't usually talk about it. What is this? Duster. We don't say one duster, but one is there. So it's x to the power minus two. That's what we have that side. Okay, let's find the, the, the answer. Half minus two. Uh, it will be minus uh, one and a half, which is three over two. So this then will be y is equals to two x to the power three over two. Yes, this is one over half. Remember, this is negative. This is negative one and a half uh, plus x to the power minus two. Now I can see what is a, what is x, what is n. What is a, what is x, what is n. Now I can find my derivative. I can find my derivative. I indicate that I'm now differentiating. That become very important. I can use this one, y prime. It is equals to, let's take this and multiply it this side. Now, you know about snotula, it doesn't work in your imaginative mind. Take this one and put it here. It's no band mandela. It's no minus three over two. The twos will have another two. Kusalo minus three. You must be able to see that. So we take this one, see if I know This is negative, this is positive. So the answer will definitely be negative. Let's deal with actual values now. This is uh, minus three over two. This is times angle two. What's the band lock? Uh, to the minus three x. Remember, it's no bangale, sino three over two. If you don't have a calculator, it's no minus three over two minus two over two, which is minus one. What is this going to give us? If you look at this, minus, this is all over two, or minus about three, no minus about two, but skipped minus about five. That's what it will eventually give us. So this then will be equals to minus five over two. All right, let's take this thing further. When we differentiate this one, Remember to subtract one at the end. This is minus times one, it will be minus two x to the power minus two minus one, which will be minus three. Right. Let's clean our, 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 our problem now. Let's clean it. So our y prime thus becomes, we've got this minus three. And so she and a peso look will come down, go back for negative one to make it positive. So so no bangazans, so no x to the power five over two. Once we have over two, a size of the square root less. Square root less of 5 over 2. So here we will have minus 3. Take this one down. It will be x to the power minus 5, or positive 5 in this case. Remember that this 2 caters, is catered for by the square root. Then minus. We've got minus 2. We take this down so that it will be positive. So it will be x to the power 3. That's the final answer in this particular problem. So it is important that the value of the exams and test you practice such problems as well. The last one that I want us to look at is the one that takes us back to grade 8 as well. It's all about factorization. If you cannot factorize, then we have a problem. Everywhere in your syllabus, in, your, in every chapter, it needs factorization and multiplication. So make sure that you grasp those two concepts so that you can be able to operate. You cannot operate mathematically without those two main concepts. Before I differentiate, let's see what is happening here. G of x is equals to, ah, what do we have on our numerator? We've got what we call a trinomial. Denominator, with x minus one. Can I factorize that? Yes, we can factorize it. We can find factors. Of x squared is x and x. Of two, just two and one. But because this is plus, the bigger number will be positive. Then that is negative. Ah, this is all over x minus one. As I said, your eyes are the most powerful tool in your mathematics. Ah, we can see that. This goes with that. Let's find the derivative now. G of x prime will then be equal. I indicate when I start to differentiate. I've got x plus 2. The instruction said evaluate. What is to evaluate? Is to find the actual value. A particular number should be the final solution. Right, let's do this thing. Remember what we have here. We've got 1. We also have one. When we differentiate a value like that, let's come back here. Let's talk about this thing here so that it will make life e easier. 
Whenever we've got u2 x squared, when we differentiate this, it will be what? 2 times 2, it will be 4 x to the power 1. It will be 4 x. But when I differentiate u2 x, what will this give me? This is 2 to the power 1. I'm going to take this times that. It will be 2. Let's just differentiate it. dy, dx, this will be 1 times 2 x to the power 1 minus 1. That's what, that's what actually happens. You take this one, you multiply it by this one, this side, you also subtract 1 there. But I know one thing, 1 times 2, it is 2. What is 1 minus 1? It is 0. What is any number to the power 0? It is 1. So this is 1 times 2, which will give us 2. change the value of that number. Because 5 to the power 0 is what? Is 1. And 1 times 5 is 5. So I did not change the value of 5. So how do I find the derivative there? I take this number, I multiply with the coefficient of x. So it will be 0 times 5, x to the power 0 minus 1. I know over to 0 times anything, it will be 0. So whenever, in other words, whenever I'm, I'm differentiating a constant value, it will be 0 in that way. So in this case, we've got 1x, it was 1, plus this number. What is the de derivative of 2? It's a constant term, it will always be 0. So this then becomes our answer. Yes, it is an actual value. That's what we're doing by ev evaluating that. Thank you. <laughs>